it's so great to see so many of you again, because I've had the chance to, you know, talk to basically all of you over the course of this sort of crazy award season. And I have to start by saying congratulations on the Best Picture Oscar nomination. And thank you, uh, thank you Chris. Best yeah. Ensemble nomination. Yes, yes, yes. How does thank it you. feel? Yeah, how does it feel to be, you know, after all this award season run, to, you know, to be one of the best pictures of 2023. Feels pretty cool. Feels, feels good. Know, yeah, to be feels to good. be recognized uh, in the SAG Award, to be recognized by your peers, you know, on that ensemble level is pretty darn cool. For the film to receive the recognition that it has. I mean, Jeffrey's apt to point out that we're a small film, punching above our weight, 26 <laughs> days of shooting in total. But the fact that, we are resonating critically and, and hopefully, you know, popularly as well is nice because you do things knowing that you think you're telling a story of value. You just don't know whether or not other people will think it's as valuable as you do. So <laughs> the idea that other people are said, are validating the thought that we originally had, like we think this is good. They think it's good too. It makes us, it, it, it feels good. Yeah. I, I say all the time that the, best part of working in film is that it's collaborative uh, and the worst part of working in film is that it's collaborative <laughs> it all depends on who you're working with and the collection of people that we gathered around this film um, was so together so equally passionate about telling the story and that the film has been acknowledged as best picture is the result of that collaboration and the result of the work of everyone that you see here and everyone who worked behind the camera and uh, you know the, the 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 not you know for lack of a better word the smallest role to the biggest in this film so i'm i'm just so pleased for all of us and uh and and, and yeah if they're handing out these things yes we'll take them <laughs> <laughs> it's also it's also so rare you know that all those things align themselves the way we've been fortunate enough to uh, be aligned or be a part of a project that's been aligned in that way, meaning that our experiences have been great doing it. And then critically, it's been um, celebrated and, and, and audiences, which is the uh, least known factor, um, are coming through and we're receiving lots of... Uh, lots of positive reactions. So those three things, aligning themselves the, uh, the way they are is um, rare. And then it's especially gratifying in a, in, a, in a year where there are so many amazing movies mm -hmm. and it could very easily kind of fall through the cracks because like uh, Sterling and Jeffrey just said, it's a small movie, but luckily we've had the support and it's, um, it's risen the way we've all have felt it was deserving of. So it's uh, so gratifying. We're the little engine that could, but <laughs> instead of, I think I can, we did. <laughs> wow. Yeah. wow. I, I, I got to say, uh, to the point of it being a, a smaller movie with a, a ton of heart, something that I've heard repeatedly as I've, you know, been talking to people uh, over the season about movies this year is that they don't really make movies like American fiction anymore. Um, movies of this sort of scale um, that uh, have the the vibe and sort of the, the heart, but also the brain and the intellect and the writing, which of course has been uh, uh, nominated as well at the Oscars. Um, they don't really make movies like that. It's either, you know, huge tentpole superhero movies, um, franchises, sequels and whatnot. When you were approached, when you all were approached to uh, jump on to this film, did you think about that? Did you, did this feel different from the onset than other things that have come across your desks or come, come your way? Did it stand out from the very beginning, American fiction? Erica, you want to run with that? Sure, love. Yes. It did. Um, I've seen a lot of, of, of projects that were based in, um, for lack of a better word, the ghetto mm. and uh, our rise in it or control of it and those types of things. And this immediately came across as different because I knew Jeffrey Wright was on and he has a level of sophistication and taste that 
tells you already that you're going to have a different experience. But then you read it and from the first few pages, you could see that there was a person who was careful and also considerate and funny. And that's hard to do on the page. And um, I was great, uh, grateful and thankful for it. But yeah, I think immediately you could feel that. Hmm. Wow. I would say that... Erica, Erica, the check's in the mail for that compliment. You're welcome. <laughs> Erica, yeah. how's that? Yeah. I would say that a movie, a movie of this size being uh, supported by a major studio um, that sl slated it for a theatrical release mm -hmm. is all very unique in today's day and time. Some studios will, will make movies like this, but they'll put it directly on the platform and then you may or you may not discover, depending on how your algorithm works on mm. whatever platform you're consuming it on. So the idea that a studio saw this movie and said, we can make it, we will put it out in theaters to be seen there um, is a real vote of confidence that I, I definitely think is becoming increasingly rare. If you don't have IP, right, or some sort of spectacle that goes along with it, to be able to get butts in the seat. That's a very difficult thing to incentivize people to go and see. And that the studio thinks that our movie was capable of doing that is a real uh, vote of confidence. And mm -hmm. they've gone all out. That's the, the amazing thing to, to watch what they're doing to promote this movie in every way possible, you know? And uh, the curiosity of people who haven't seen it. I had an incident uh, yesterday where um, uh, my housekeeper said, you know, I work for somebody else and they said, your movie is fabulous and I want to go. So I said, no problem. Boom, 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 boom. Fandango, here we go. And she's <laughs> going to see it next week. So it's being talked about everywhere now. It's wow. fabulous. Wow. Got I think, it, you know, what John was talking about, you know, this rare combination of things that that makes this possible is absolutely on point. And yes, it's about the quality of the work, but it's also about, as Leslie described, the support that we've gotten from Orion, Amazon, MGM. But there's another element to our film that uh, uh, I think makes a massive difference. Yes, we're a small film, but the story that we're telling centers on issues, dynamics, conversations that are happening right now in America, in classrooms across the nation, outside of classrooms ac across the nation. This is at the heart of the political discourse mm. that we're having right now around race, history, uh, inclusion. This is, uh, this is timely stuff. It's a big conversation. And what we've managed to do, you know, following Cord's leadership and uh, and 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 building off of his script and Percival Everett's uh, book, is to create uh, an environment where we can come together, at least for the two hours that this film is showing, and uh, and gather around these issues, and at the same time have a laugh, even laugh at ourselves as we do it. So it, yeah. it uh, again, to reference, you know, what, you know, John describes it, it's a rare stuff mixed into this recipe. Um, and, uh, uh, but at the heart of it, we're telling a story that wants to be heard right now. Mm. And uh, I think that's why we were all drawn to this script uh, in the first place, because we, uh, we felt it was a, uh, so it was a story that wanted to be told and one that we wanted to tell. So it's wonderful that audiences are receiving it uh, as we might have, uh, as we expected. Yeah. Wow. You know what's cool? Just quickly, just just quickly, just because I, I feel like what Jeffrey just said in your original question about about the throwback nature of it all um, is also kind of magical. You know, like the first time I saw the movie, I was like, it's a movie. It's like it's a story and it's like and it's and it's and it's and it's compact and it acts a punch and I and it's joyful and it's all these wonderful things that you want art to be or you want to be affected by it, you know, um, and it's in the theater, only in the theater. Mm -hmm. And it's so so there's this great like paradox or, you know, of like of like of like old school and like timeliness 
you know, packaged up together. And there's many layers to the story itself packaged. You know, it's like so multi-layered and so complex. But what's fascinating to me is the, the simplicity of the journey that it takes you on. Mm. You know, it's and, funny and, and, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, that's not big. I mean, it is funny as hell at the same time. You know, you you laugh and you you know what all, and then all <laughs> something happens and you go, oh wait, oh, oh, I didn't see that coming, which is magic. Mm. I I I so agree, and I think um, you've all sort of hit uh, what I think is so such an impressive achievement for a film like this to marry such sharp literary cri criticism, you know, a sharp satire about uh, the literary world. I mean, as a black writer, it really did hit very deep. It really got to the quick. And then marrying that with this really um, beautiful and sentimental family story about a family at the heart of it. So juggling that um, I thought was so, so impressive and and really a hard thing to sort of pull off and and calibrating that with your performances i mean specifically at jeffrey because you you know you exist in the literary world that follows you you know as monk and then also you're uh, wrestling with your your family dynamics uh can you talk about that sort of that dichotomy um moving between those two those two modes well i i i found them to be you know, related to one another in a really organic way. So really for me in doing it, it was just going from one day to the next uh, because kind of thematically, the family story exists in some ways as a kind of, you know, antidote to the, uh, you know, the absurdity, the tragic absurdity of the satirical side and that dual life that he's asked to live. He does it, Yes, because he's outraged and, you know, in, in some ways he's throwing a fit in, in writing this book that he thinks is beneath him, but he's doing it also, or he follows through with it out of a sense of responsibility to his family and to his mother. So there's a there's a very uh, uh, organic relationship to one another. Um, also, uh, that, you know, absurd life that he lives of this character that he creates stag r lee is born of that dynamic too so there was no like kind of uh you know now i've got to shift gears as well we wanted to make sure that the styles were blended in a way that made sense uh mm. in a way that was grounded in a reality yes it's satirical yes it's you know it's uh you know it's um it's comic but at the same time, it's all too real. <laughs> so, so there, you know, I I didn't find find the disparity between those two uh, aspects of the film to be challenging. And in fact, I don't see them as being so necessarily disparate uh, mm. at all. Uh, they exist together um, for me, and and that's how I, you know, I how I balance between the two of them, wow. if there are in fact two. Yeah. <laughs> Wow, I I love that, and I I I totally, I I totally see that, and I I I I have to say, so much of the film, to me, and having now watched it multiple times, you know, I you think it's one thing, right, and then you approach it, and uh, and you see it again, and you're like, oh, I noticed how, you know, it's about identity and it and monk's identity and his sort of identity crisis once he becomes staggerly but then every character sort of is having their own reckoning with their own identity i mean we have cliff who's you know dealing with you know coming out as a gay man you know in his you know middle age and we have agnes sort of losing her identity in some ways because of dementia we have Coraline, you know uh wrestling with her identity now post-divorce and building a life again do you did you see those through lines while you were filming um, while you were approaching your role, sort of how identity is sort of at the core uh, of each, or at least to me, uh, you know, from my uh, reading of the text and watching the film, identity seemed to be so crucial to all of these, to every character, not just Monk, but also all of the supporting characters. I want to hear Erica's response to this, because I remember in a talk about Erica yes. saying that like, Coraline yes. knows who she is, so I'm curious to see what she has <laughs> yes. to say to your thesis. <laughs> 
Well, Chris, all right, Sterling. Uh, <laughs> I'm I think each, wrong. <laughs> no, I think each character carries their own local weather. So mm. I think that's what you're feeling. So every time Jeffrey's monk character turns around, there's this different weather system he's in. He can't operate in the silo anymore. He knows that. He has to manage his life, which is very annoying for him. So um, I think this is a an interesting thing that, you know, that people are experiencing while they're they're watching it, seeing everybody sort of have a very full life. And Tracy talks about that a lot. And um, I always say that everyone in front of that camera is a hammer. They are very strong, beautiful, very filled out performers. And I, I play a lot of extroverted characters and and I and in, in this I actually exercise a muscle that's very underused in the narrative storytelling that I'm involved in, especially if you're a black woman, that's being the object of desire or seduction. Mm. And you're allowed to relax in a safe space. It's a very delicate balance and, and, and it's elusive. So it's a little harder to play, but it's easier surrounded by strong, confident men. And these are, men are strong in real life, R-E-L-L and R-E-E-L. -E so I feel very <laughs> protected and respected and cared for. But um, the ensemble is what it's all about. And uh, yeah, we still are playing very well together as an ensemble, but we know how to be soloist when it's time. Yeah, wow. No, that totally, that makes sense that I do feel, Coraline might be the only character that really has a, you know, a very strong sense of self and and uh, is sort of the rock in terms of who she is and her identity. I mean, Cliff is like really, speaking of identity crisis, Cliff goes through a pretty big <laughs> crisis. Yeah, Cliff, the... Cliff's a bit of, he's a bit of a hot mess. A bit um, of a mess, yeah. He's a one. bit of a mess, but I think, I think that, there is, he's looking to find the joy in the mess because he knows it's sort of coloring in the lines doesn't work anymore, mm. that it didn't lead to um, happiness because he wasn't living his life as his authentic, most genuine self. Um, and so like when you meet him, he, things are blown up, but he's now on, on a pathway that he knows he has to go through in order to reach something of real value. Um, and so anytime Monk tells him like he got to quit making so much noise or get out of the pool, he's basically saying, you can kiss my black ass because I'm tired of people telling me how I am supposed to be in life. And mm. while Monk doesn't be interested, like you being loud and you're annoying. Like for me, <laughs> it's like, I don't care how annoying I am right now. It's about me being my true self. Right. And it's sort of interesting to see these two brothers encounter e each other at these particular crossroads in their lives because they've been outside of each other's lives for such a long time. You know, their mm -hmm. sister was sort of the tie that binds. I, I, I honestly don't. I can't imagine anything else probably bringing Cliff home outside of something happening to his sister. Right. Because he's mm -hmm. still feeling estranged from his mom as well and unsupported and unwelcome to a certain extent and so it, it was a joy to see him go from a place of discomfort and feeling outside to when um when he he finally got that hug and invited to that wedding and feeling like no this is a place that is mine as well yeah ah, that was that was that was a good feeling it's good feeling. <laughs> and wow. what, what's remarkable about that moment is is cliff you know didn't even want Lorraine in the family anymore. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, nice. And yet, and, and yet. He sure you know, did. He was like, have you thought about getting rid of it? I'm like, I don't know what to tell you, bro. <laughs> she offers redemption. But I think there, there yeah. there's, you know, something that um, is, is wonderful, as you describe, in terms of this desire to be the authentic self, this desire to be the free self, that, 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 is also a universal thing that we all as individuals want to be seen for who we are. Um, and that applies no matter what your background is. So there, there's this wonderful element, like the family that provides, um, you know, a space for all who, 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 who watch this film. Likewise, that Cliff's narrative and Monk's narrative as well, this desire to be one's free self, I think, is resonant across board across the board as well. Mm. Yeah, I I I think that is 
Yeah, that is so true to be one's authentic self and and uh, to go off of what Sterling said, of uh, to rail against what people are telling you you're supposed to be. I feel like as you know, as people of color, as black people, you know, so often society is trying to dictate how we're supposed to be or what they want from us. Um, and to see a film that confronts that and provides multiple ways of dealing with that. I mean, we have Issa Rae's character. We have, you know, her being like, yeah, is it so bad to give people what they want? You know, if that's what the market demands. We have that, that's such a brilliant scene um, towards the end of the film. And we have Monk sort of struggling with that. And one of my favorite things about it is that we don't get any sort of concrete answer. Like, yes, this is the way to tap into your authentic self or it's bad to sell or, or, give people what they might want. I mean, what now that you've all been in the movie, you know, been in this world for so long, what do you make of the ending or that sort of central argument and the ambiguity that's sort of center to the ending of the film, which I still have so many conversations with friends about all the time. I think that's the point. Yeah. <laughs> mm. That conversation, that yeah. the conversation continue. Yeah. yeah. You know, it'd be so easy to see, you know, he and Caroline, you know, go off in the sunset together. That's the easy way out. But uh, yeah. no, 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 no. Uh, that's, I, I love that. You see the brothers together in that red car. Mm. <laughs> Already, you know, it's like very Hollywood in a way. <laughs> yeah. You know, my makeup artist said she took her whole family last night and that she said, it was like looking into an infinity mirror. Mm -hmm. And she was very captivated by the multiple endings. And I said, wow, people are getting in the metaverse with this. And mm -hmm. I've noticed that people have now concocted all these theories around whether the movie departs from itself. And we're actually looking at the movie where, where, when it does and where it does. Is it when the monk character starts to write this thing and, and the, it breaks the fourth wall and he brings the characters in? Um, and, and, uh, I've had a lot of conversations with people who just now truly believe that there's some sort of mojo going on. And I love that because they're looking out their own universe. That's mm. hilarious. Oh. I always thought the departure happened when he got on the phone and said, I got an idea for how to end the movie. Like that's, but like just sort of in, in that way. Um, but I do think that we as a society, the reason why we have difficulty having conversation is because, um, we are tied to the idea of being right mm. and um, mm. having conversations around mm. diversity, equity, inclusion, justice, race, et cetera, like people are either wrong or right. And it makes it difficult to have conversation that doesn't devolve into argumentation. Mm. And so to spend more time in contemplation of the question and less time trying to get to an answer per se, may be something that we could collectively embrace because when we're not so sure, we listen. Mm. When you are sure, it kind of cuts you off from hearing anybody else's perspective on something, right? So mm. I think what 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 uh, Jeffrey was saying is that the invitation to that conversation, to that dialogue, I think is more important than any one particular answer. We had one talk back I can remember. Uh, and this woman in the front row, very cool sister, she was like, are you guys saying we shouldn't make these movies that are sort of like tales from the hood, so to speak, or slave narratives or whatnot? Because she was mm -hmm. talking about how she had to leave where she uh, she would leave like a, some sort of instrument lesson and she'd have to come back to where she lived in the inner city of Chicago and the things were rough and whatnot. And I, I was saying, I think we all sort of came to this place like the movie is not saying that those movies should not be told but mm. they should not be told over and over again to the exclusion of other yeah. representations of Black life, right? Yeah. Um, that's where I sit with it right now. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. You know, as the mother character, there's some moments in there that I, that I love is that, you know, when she discovers uh, Cliff with his friends in the house, <laughs> but <laughs> later on, she's dancing with them, having a great, time you were grooving ma you were grooving. <laughs> <laughs> you know yeah. i mean sure she's going to, to mention everything but she has enough sense to know that hey 
I'm having a good time with these people. <laughs> They're bringing me some joy here. And even the, the moment with the Coraline is when she is sitting at the table, she recognizes something in her that she's comfortable enough with her to say what she has to say. Mm. She's wow. a good, strong woman, you know? And so those are the moments she has. She, listen, she raised fine children. Mm -hmm. Whatever the issues were, they're fine children. And we all have mess. <laughs> we we try to do the best we can. And, and our children are different. And we, mm -hmm. we have to allow them to be different. But we also have secrets. Mm. Sometimes parents, especially of a certain generation, they don't tell you anything. Everything is fine, you know. And then later on, you find that oh my gosh, that was going on. Um, <laughs> they don't they don't share. And yeah. unfortunately, it's sometimes it's it's not good for our children. They grow up a certain way, thinking oh well, life is like this. And then they find out oh my god, you mean they didn't really have money to pay the rent or whatever the situation is. That's wow. what. You know, I love about the story. Yeah, I love, I, I love, quick, yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, please. Oh, no, I, I was just going to say just quickly, if I can, that in terms of uh, identity and representation from, I love how it reverberates or trickles down to many different manifestations mm -hmm. within the storytelling of it. And so someone like Arthur, for instance, um, when like, when I read it, I, you know, I've said many times how it was such a refreshing joy to be offered the part of an agent, you know, that happens to be named Arthur and there's no, there's no, you know, trauma attached to it. There's no like extra thing. He's just like, we mm. want you for that part. And, um, and it could have, and so that was a departure for me, the real person, John Ortiz, because it's quite limiting, you know, mm -hmm. um, it just doesn't happen as often, right? And yet, when I played the role and the telling of Arthur, there was no, there was no extra noise around a Puerto Rican playing the role of Arthur. Yeah. He mentions it at the very end, you know, but you just, you know, I, I was just able to live in it, to live in the everyday nature of being an agent and relating to another man who's my client on many different levels that um that was real you mm -hmm. know and 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 so and so uh I just want to say that and I yeah. thought that was kind of like deep you know and then and then like he does mention it at the very end and like I still don't know what I say about being Puerto Rican because mm -hmm. there's a big laugh line that happens right before it you know and that yeah. was like my favorite line and then I'm that's like, the, that, that it's so was. it's so unfortunate John that's the funniest line in the movie for, for my money <laughs> is your line but um, it's not heard uh, yeah. Johnny yeah. oh and, I wanted and, to be that part I wanted to be that part it was it's <laughs> such a great part Oh, yeah. good. That's so. Uh, and just quickly, because uh, yeah. you mentioned the awesome scene between Issa Rae and Jeffrey, uh, I didn't know until recently that that scene wasn't in the book. Mm. Yeah. Cord completely, like, the, that's his genius. You know, yeah. he, when he was reading the book and made the choice to say, I, I would love to adapt this into a screenplay, it's like, I can't wait to put those two in a room together. Yeah. You know? oh, and it's, it's such an amazing scene. It is. And it's so, it encapsulates, you know, sort of the whole heart of, uh, of, of the film in a way, and yet leaves us sort of open to listening. It's a real dialogue. It's a real conversation. As Sterling said, two people really talking to each other and listening to each other and not just sticking their feet in the ground and, uh, you know, having to be right. Um, I do, I know we don't have that much time left, but I do, I got to say, as someone who has always loved uh, the Oscars and and acting and and just incredible performances. I have to say, congrats to both Sterling and Jeffrey on their Oscar nominations. I mean, both for the you know your first ones, both such stalwart, you know, uh, fantastic actors who've been in this industry for a while, right? Who've been working and doing not as long as Jeffrey, but ah. you know, <laughs> You'll you'll get there, Sterling. You'll get there. <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> stick, stick with it. 
Stick with it. I, I would love to know how does that, you know, honor and distinction feel? What the day that it happened? How did how did it all how did it all feel? How do you feel right now, too, given given the recognition? It's so incredible. Sterling. I, I feel blessed and highly favored. Uh, shout out to Arlene Brown. That's one of her favorite statements. That's my mama. Mm -hmm. um, I feel I feel honored that we get a chance to celebrate together. Like it, it's easier to to celebrate everybody else than it is to celebrate yourself. So the fact that we get to go to the party juntos together mm -hmm. means the world to me. Um, I don't, I don't know. Like it, it's you you read the script, you know that you're reading something good. You know that Jeffrey Wright is attached to it. And then you get to set and you get a chance to play with Leslie Uggams and Erica Alexander. And I didn't get a chance to play with John, but the first question was like, how are the scenes with John? Was it fun? Jerry's like, oh man, they were great. They're so good. And then you get giddy because you're like, all right, it's coming together. How was Tracy? Was she cool? I didn't get to meet my sister, but I know we related to each other. <laughs> it's like, oh, Tracy was great. You know, so there's this collective enthusiasm and joy to be bringing chords words to life because the words meant so much when we read them on the page mm. the fact that we thought this good thing was good that other people think is good too is a cool thing and I, mm. I can pretty much leave it at that. what about you jeff what about me yes sir. <clears throat> um yeah this is wonderful uh um wonderful acknowledgement of the work that we did together. And and I mean this, that uh, that the film itself was recognized is, is a testament to the work all of us did. That means so much to this experience for me. Mm -hmm. uh, it, I, I don't, I say this often and I mean it. The thing that I have come to enjoy most about this work is that I do it with everyone else who's involved, not just in front of the camera, but behind the camera as well. I'm not, I try. This work can drive you toward a certain egoism. Mm -hmm. I have for the entirety of my career worked to fight that. I think it's poisonous. Mm -hmm. When I work on a set, I look around, I see an electrician working, I see a carpenter who's built that set that I'm standing on. I see uh, the teamster who has driven me to set. I see the guy in the administrative, the woman in the administrative office who's doing work that no one ever sees, but is affecting everything that we do. And I love when the camera's on and I'm in the frame. And my job amidst all those other jobs is to tell the story that's on the page through my character's uh, uh, person mm. and and it's 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 that simple to me it's not complicated and I love that we all come together to do this thing and I love when it comes together with a group of people um, who do it well and enjoy doing it together that's what happened and our peers said yes well done mm. and uh, I, I, I feel uh, you know again I'll say it if they're handing them out yes we'll take them <laughs> and, I am, and I am and I'm grateful to have been acknowledged. Uh, I told I called my aunt, uh, my aunt Naomi, who's 94 years old now. And I hadn't heard from her that morning. Uh, she came to live with us after my mom passed. She raised me, uh, the two of them, my mother and my aunt. And I called her. I said, hey, uh, I said, hey, Nay, I haven't heard from you. She doesn't dial a phone so well now. Her eyesight is fade, fade, fading. And uh, I had the good fortune of building a house for her back home in Virginia, where she lives now. Probably the best thing I've ever done uh, uh, in my life, aside from raising my kids. I called her. I said, Nate, did you hear any news this morning? She said, uh, oh, yeah, I heard that. Yeah. <laughs> I said, oh, oh, congratulations. Yeah, that's great. She said, but, you know, you should have been nominated a long time ago. <laughs> she right. said, you should have been nominated for Boston <laughs> So, so, right. so, so you know, my, you my, my family, they like to make it plain, you know, yes. but, um, but I am, I am, as Sterling describes, I've been doing this a long time and I'm super grateful for, for the, for the personal acknowledgement and for the acknowledgement of the work that we did together. 
um, it's good stuff. Good yeah. stuff. That we'll is, take it. Wow. That, that was, that is such a, I think a beautiful way to end it. And you know what? My, my fingers are crossed because this was my favorite movie of the year. And it's just such, it's such a, an important and funny and fantastic film. And you all do such beautiful work. So congratulations to, to all of you. And thank you so much for having this conversation. I really, I really appreciate it. It's really. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Thank, thank you, so Chris. Much. This was great. From, you from the beginning, Chris, again. you should. From the beginning, Chris, you showed an interest in this film. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Yeah. Here again, you're, you're still here with us. Much appreciated. <laughs> yeah. I, I know how to pick them, I think. I, it's all I, like. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I got to yeah. take you to the racetrack. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know horses, but I can try. Hey, I'd, I'd love to go, you know? Come on, Chris, pick them, baby. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> Let's do it. Wow. I love you Thank guys. you so much. This is great. Wow. Love you. Love you. Love you. Bye-bye. Yeah. All right. Here, bye.